Hello and welcome back to Best of the Bets. My name's Christina Nicolaides and I have our regular guest with me, editor Sam Diamond from Best of the Bets and our bookie extraordinaire, it's Gareth Walker from Heaven Bet. We've got Sunday's Premier League action to look at and also some of the European games, but we're going to start with the Premier League fixtures for Sunday and we're going to start with Manchester City versus Liverpool. But before I ask the guys what they think, we're going to hear what Mike Holden has to say. Uh, the City-Liverpool game on Sunday has real potential to be low scoring, I think, because uh, you've got two possession teams, um, low shot conversion rates. The, you know They do tend to take a lot of shots on goal, but don't necessarily get the rewards in points that you know they should be should be doing. And uh, I think you know they could be. It's not to say it'll be a dull game or a boring game. I just think that they'll kind of you know there'll be a big emphasis on possession and goal malfaction might be in short supply. Uh, Liverpool, of course, went out of the FA Cup last week into Oldham in rather embarrassing circumstances. Uh, so you know they'll be sort of wounded a little bit and fr from that and, and looking to make amends with Rodgers. Um, and City is struggling to score goals at the moment, as they've shown at QPR in midweek. Um, you know the goals aren't necessarily flowing, uh, flowing freely. The first goal is essential. Um, and when they get that, they tend to be comfortable. But I don't think Liverpool's the, are, the, are the kind of team that City will then go and take to the cleans if they do get the first goal. So I see a KG, KG encounter in store there. Um, so Manchester City drew against QPR earlier in the week uh, and haven't lost since Boxing Day, since uh, Sunderland. Well, no, but you, you know, you'd expect them to, to go on these long unbeaten runs yeah. throughout the season. But... Yeah, the nil-nil draw at QPR in the week was a sort of a big blow to their title aspirations, yeah. and they could well find themselves ten points behind Manchester United going into this game. Um, they were very, very fortunate to get a draw at Anfield earlier in the season. Um, it was only thanks to a real boneheaded Martin Skirtle error that got them back into the game to draw two-two. But I think this this one will go their way. But I think it's going to be tight. And what we saw at QPR in the week was they're really struggling to create chances, as Mike said. Um, so I think if they are to win this, they need to get it done early or they need to score early. Yeah. Otherwise, the longer the game goes on, the harder it's going to come for them. That's why I fancy Man City half-time, Man City full-time. Yeah, it's priced at 2.9 and it's a good way of, uh, of well, as always, you get a better price. Obviously, there's, there's more, more dependent on more things happening, but rather than just playing the outright win, which is odds on, uh, 2.9 for the, to be ahead at half-time and win the game at full-time. I, I find it fascinating the way Liverpool are, are priced up. The, this price is, is, these prices are very similar to the price that Manchester United were at home to Liverpool. And Liverpool are, are constantly being priced up as if they're a, a top three or four side. If, if Chelsea went to Manchester City, the price would be very similar. Um, and Liverpool just aren't a top three side. They have the potential to be. I've looked at Liverpool in these big games so many times and I just have to give them a swerve because um, against the, the smaller teams, as we've discussed, they're, they're fine, but they still haven't beaten anyone in the top half. The games against the big, the, the main powers in England, uh, they've played eight games now and they've drawn four and lost four. So I, I don't really see any encouragement for Liverpool. I guess the one thing that they will cling on to is that City are, are not scoring many at the moment. But I mean, defensively, they're so solid. So I mean, yeah, 1 0 at 6.7, 2 0 at 7.4, perhaps. As Gareth says, Liverpool still not beating anyone in the top half and having thrown away that lead at Arsenal. And you just wonder. That, that's got to be playing on their minds. It has to become a mentality issue somewhere along the lines because we know they've got talent in their team. Another issue Liverpool have is that Jamie Curry got man of the match against Arsenal. Uh, for me, he, he was terrible. It, part of the issue, part of the reason Liverpool were so deep and, and everything was because Curry is so slow. He, he's not the defender that he used to be. So he, they're just almost inviting teams onto them. Um, and yeah, Curry is great for a, a last-ditch block and all the rest of it. But... Yeah, I've, I've, I've gone off Liverpool. And Coutinho isn't going to be playing because he's currently injured. Yeah, I think that could well be a trend with his career over here as well. Yeah, home win, I think, there, definitely. 2-0. Two 2-0, nil. Two nil, which is 7.4. OK. Uh, West Brom versus Tottenham. Now, West Brom, they haven't won since Boxing Day, so they are desperate for their first win of the calendar year. But can they do it? Well, they're 3.6 to beat Tottenham. The draw is 3.5 and Tottenham are 2.1 to win this game. Poor form continued again at Goodison Park in the week and there's no disgrace in losing 2-1 to Everton. But I think the worrying thing with West Brom was that scoreline really flattered them. There was no energy in their team whatsoever. Mm. It, it was a very poor performance. Claudio Yako's back from injury now 
and Yusuf Malumbu is now going to be back from the African Cup of Nations. So those two can reform that partnership that made West Brom so strong at the start of the season. Tottenham. Tottenham. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I was I was very very positive and bullish about Tottenham, but I've just got this big worry that Sandro, which which we all knew would be a big miss, is going to be an absolutely huge miss. If the answer is to play Scott Parker instead, that seems to be penalising them about half a goal a game, and they were really poor at Norwich for for much of the game, and that's a Norwich team that haven't been in great form themselves. Um, I think Tottenham will be good enough to win this game. I think it'll be be fairly fairly tight, fairly cagey, and I think Tottenham do just have enough. Quality. It'll be very interested to see how Holtby fits in the, the, the signing from Schalke. But I think that is a boost to midfield, and that's something yeah. they really needed. Um, but you know, as you say, it's just something odd about Tottenham at the moment. They've drawn the last three in the league. Yeah. I think it's going to go the same way again. I think it's going to end one all. One all, which is six point seven. One thing Holtby certainly will bring to the team is post-it notes. I don't know what that was a <laughs> bizarre incident when he came on on, uh, on Wednesday. They, they are lacking an office stationery at Tottenham, so oh, uh, very very be useful. A, a big help. Tottenham uh, to win two one is is eight. That's the that's the bet I'd go for. Here. Obviously, yeah, both teams played in midweek, but you'd like to ho hope that West Brom's lack of FA Cup game the weekend before will give them mm. a little bit more energy this weekend. Yeah, it'd be tough finding this win though. It's, yeah, it's, it's, if, if they hadn't had such a great start to the season, they'd be looking over their shoulder at the drop. But I mean, they'll be fine. They're, they're, they've yeah. got too many points to have any trouble there. OK. Remember for you to place your bets on any of these games and much more, head to our website www.heavenbet.com and you can now follow us on Twitter at Best of the Bets. So we're going to start looking at the European action and we're starting with Bayer Leverkusen versus Borussia Dortmund. Really Should looking forward. Oh yeah, really looking forward to this one. Leverkusen a 3.4, the draws 3.6. Um, and Dortmund 2.1 this uh, this game second against third of course yeah. I think people will say that whoever loses this will be out of the title race but I think in truth none of it neither will, will catch by Munich nah, this season playing for second place so yeah they're playing for second place but you know that, that's a big thing in itself Bayer Leverkusen the only unbeaten home team in Germany now this season so it, this is a big ask for Dortmund yeah. who have started to click back into gear so you know if they're really going to show that they're the sort of the quality side who went on an amazing run in the second half of last season. This is the game to do it. They've won the last three. They've scored 11 in the process. I'm going to back them to win this one. Confidence to break that uh, unbeaten yeah. home record. I mean, Dortmund's away record itself is fantastic. They've only lost one game away from home. Um, draw, the draw at 3.6 is what, it, is what draws me here. Um, could well be goals actually 2-2 two, two, which is priced at 11 is a, is a bet that I'm keen on there Oh yeah I think despite uh, Leverkusen's very boring 0-0 draw with Freiburg last week they are very much an overside this season I think 13 of their 19 games have gone over 2.5 so I think there'll be goals Dortmund 3-1 for me Dortmund 3-1 which is 13.3 OK we're going to move on to AC Milan versus Udinese and uh, obviously they AC Milan have got the, uh, the added benefits, or we hope so, of Super Mario. Well, the, the Milan nightclubs will be delighted <laughs> that, uh, that Super Mario's in town. Um, I, I thought it was a fantastic bit of business that Milan did. I'm terrified of the prospect of Mario Balotelli out on the town with uh, Silvio Berlusconi. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, a yeah. frightening you can prospect. see the headlines now. Yeah. Well, they got 20 million for him, but if they'd sold him after um, the European Championships last summer, they would have got probably double yeah. that. That's when his, his star was... The thing is, nice. I think it's a transfer now that's been on the car for the best part of the year. Uh, I think the club wanted it and I think Balotelli wanted it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is a big chance for him now. If he can start replicating the performances he's put in for the Italian national team, Team yeah. for his club side, he can really fulfil the talent that he clearly has. Um, but it's, it's a big boost for AC Milan yeah, because definitely. you know they, they, since, been, since they, Ibrahimovic been, has left, yeah. they, you know, they need a talisman um, and they need just a bit of you know youthful impetus. So many sort of old timers in their team. Yeah. They, they finished second versus third last season, and obviously they both struggled uh, fifth this time around. Ninth. Yeah, but but both have shown a, a bit of turnaround in their fortunes lately. So, uh, yeah, prices. Milan are 1.6 to win this. The draws four and Udinese 6.5 to win. Um, this is a game that they should win. I mean, Udinese, Di Natale still going strong for them. But, you know, sort of mid-table is about where they, they, they deserve to be, really, I'd say, based on the season. Um, so I, I can't really see beyond a Milan home win. Any scores, you fancy? Uh, I, I like Milan to edge this one. I think it will be a close game. Um, but I think that the thing with Milan and Udinese is they both lost key players. Uh, sort of every season they seem to lose someone else, so they keep coming back. But Milan, seven wins now in nine, including the last four of the San Siro, and I think it's that home form that's going to see them through here. Uh, Milan price is on the short side for me, so I'm going to look at taking Milan half-time, Milan full-time. 
which is 2.4. Good, uh, good idea. OK, we're going to move on to Valencia versus Barcelona. Now, Barcelona did lose against uh, Sociedad, so Valencia did get beat by uh, Real Madrid 5-0. Yeah, I'm really annoyed and frustrated because uh, I was sucked into thinking Valencia had, had chances in that game and it was 5-0 at half-time, wasn't it? It wasn't just a 5-0 thumping, it was 5-0 yeah. at half-time. And I'm struggling to, to summon up any enthusiasm for making a case for Valencia winning this, really. Um, you know, they have been, been strong at home this season, but that game was just, just diabolical, really. Yeah. Uh, they'll be keen to put things right. But if Barcelona did need any extra incentive or any extra kick, perhaps that, that defeat at... Uh, so I think Valencia will hope to take you know, advantage of any ill effects of the Clasico game in midweek in the Copa del Rey. But whether that's going to be enough, I don't know, because in their nine games against teams in the top half this season, they've only uh, fortuitous this win against Atletico Madrid. Yeah. And they, haven't, uh, they failed to score in six of those nine games too. So you know, if Roberto Soldado is not firing up front, they really do struggle for goals. I think it's 11 games and five years as well since they beat Barcelona. So, you know, you can't really look beyond the league leaders at the moment. Yeah, I mean, Barcelona are so strong that they went off odds on against Real Madrid in the end. They were a very popular selection and um, didn't, didn't win, but, you know, they got a draw. They're in poor position to get through to the, the final when they meet again at the end of, of February. Um, so clinical, they just, yeah, it's, it's difficult to, to pick holes in, in Barcelona, really. They're just, just so good up front. So prediction? Um... um what are you going? I'm going to go 3-0 again and I'm going to stick with Barcelona on the, the one goal handicap. So we've got 3-0 to Barcelona which is 10.4 and this, this, this way which I think is the way to play Barcelona um, rather than take the 1.45 about them winning the match uh, you're getting 2.1 uh, about them on the handicap they have to win by two or more goals but yeah. with Barcelona so irresistible up front that's, that's the way to go. OK, and we mentioned Atletico Madrid that's what we're going to talk about now versus Real Betis second versus fifth. It is, yes. Uh, Atletico short for this one, 1.45. Same price as Barcelona, in fact. Uh, the draw is 4.5. Uh, Betis as big as 7.7. .7. Uh, second versus fifth, yes. Yeah, it is. And, but I think that the thing you have to sort of take your hat off to there is both teams have wildly exceeded expectations on in the season. Yeah. I think Betis sitting fifth is a, a phenomenal story. Um, really hovered around the relegation zone last season. And Pepe Mel has done a fantastic job there. Um, both these teams... You know, after sort of having so much attention bestowed upon them, we both hammered three 0 last week. Um, uh, Atletico, uh, Athletic Bilbao, and I think Betis were yeah. turned over by Vallecano. So, not coming in on the greatest of form. But the thing about Atletico this season is their home form is astonishing. They've won all eleven games. Yeah. It's the best in Europe. Um, oh, the only thing to say against that, they haven't had Real Madrid or or Barcelona in town yet. But even, even, even so, it's so still eleven, 11 wins from eleven. Yeah. Um, I think it will continue probably quite convincingly as well. Yeah, but I mean, the bang on course to be top dogs in, in Madrid, which would be a fantastic achievement. Um, yeah, I, again, it's, it's not, not overly uh, fantastic to be just tipping up another odds-on shot, but that, that's the way I see this one. The way I think to play this Atletico game is to actually put it in a double, Atletico and Barcelona. Individually, they're both priced at 1.45, but if you put those together in a double, you're getting odds against. So I, I think that's a, a really, really solid bet. I'd be pretty confident of that coming in. OK, best bet for Sunday, Gareth. Um, I'm going to go with that as my best bet. The double, uh, Barcelona and Atletico both to win. Sam? I'm going to put my faith in the, uh, the champions of Germany. I'm going to go with Borussia Dortmund to end by Leverkusen's home run. OK, and I'm going to go for AC Milan to beat Udinese. So that's uh, 1.6. You're going for an odds on trick. You're looking to break your duck. <laughs> um, before we, uh, we wrap up the show, you've got another, or you're going to recap the promotion for us. It's yes, the Super Bowl. it is the Super Bowl, and in recognition of that fantastic uh, English tradition of staying up all night to, uh, to watch a game happening uh, many hundred miles away, um, if you place a bet with Heaven Bet and your team is ahead at half-time uh, but doesn't go on to win the Super Bowl, then your losing bet will be refunded. Sam, you've got a definite excuse to be late now on, uh, on Monday. A genuine one. <laughs> <laughs> for, you to, for you to place your bets on this weekend's games and much more, then head to our website, www.heavenbet.com. We are now on Twitter, at Best of the Bets, and do tweet us. And if you want to watch this show back, then head to www.theplayerchannel.com forward slash sports. We'll see you back here, same time, same place, next week. Bye-bye.